this video, I'm going to present an algorithm that I created, which allows you to essentially do image segmentation on the basis of the local texture. I did it initially in the context of a problem or an area called uh, biogeographic regionalization or eco-regionalization. And what that does is basically if you're looking at satellite image data, it tries to divide up the map into regions based on, which, which are eco-regions, which are basically uh, which are uh, like ecologically um, and geographically defined regions where you expect there to be a kind of a, a different ecosystems or different distributions of plants and animals. The method I made is, can be applied to any uh, image and I applied it to like cities next and it was uh, it produced these really um, convincing um, boundaries and you can also cluster the uh, you can, you can uh, kind of look at what each of the regions is on its own and see um, how the, the regions that it, the, the parts of the image that it grouped together kind of makes sense as a cluster. So the general pipeline for the algorithm goes like this. You start by loading in your raw image. You then divide that into square patches, which could be overlapping or non-overlapping, doesn't matter. You can save each of those uh, as a separate file in MATLAB. You can just save it as a .mat file. Um, and then you go through, and for each one, you're going to create this uh, feature vector, which I'm going to describe next, how you define that um, in terms of the, the distribution of the color values. And then you basically, once you have your set of these feature vectors, you just, in the simplest way, you can just go and cluster them at that point. And then after clustering them, you know, you get a unique, uh, you get a cluster ID for each uh, vector. And you then map those cluster IDs back onto the image. Um, and then finally, you do a, uh, a smoothing uh, procedure. You do like a noise reduction because it, oftentimes it's going to be very like noisy when you map it back. Um, and that's basically it. So the problem that I was trying to solve in terms of creating these feature vectors was how can I create a distribution for, so for each patch, I want to know what colors are in that little patch. So the problem is how do you discretize colors into a, a, a palette where you're, and then what you can do for each patch is that you measure the frequency of that color in that patch. And ultimately what I did was to create a histogram of 100 different colors and I measured the frequency of that color of each of these 100 colors in each patch. So the vector becomes a 100 dimensional uh, feature vector which is normalized to be like a probability distribution over these discrete colors. Um, and so the, the problem is how, first is like, how do you create a discrete color? The data um, is in, in terms of a, just a list of these three, three element vectors, the RGB vectors. And from that, we want to, creating a color, a discrete like color palette comes down to basically dividing up the RGB color space, which is like zero to one along each of the three axes, and dividing that into re uh, volume defined regions. And uh, so the first way I had tried was basically to just do a rect rectangular lattice type of division of the RGB space where you just have M um, divisions along each axis. So you have a total of M cubed possible boxes and each little local you know cube inside the lattice would be one color and so okay so under that assumption what you would do is then measure the amount of pixels like for your your patch you have uh, you have like I called it like a R by R um, pixels in that or, or little RGB vectors in that patch and then how many of those fall into each of these cubes, each of these M cubed cubes. Um, the problem with this type of a representation, if you, if you take that, that distribution of, uh, of, how, of the prob 
the number of pixels in each of those cubes as a feature vector for the patch. The problem is that you uh, have a lot of these cubes which will end up having nothing in them. So it's a lot of wasted features. And you can see from the, uh, the distribution of actual plotting in, in RGB space, like over the full image, the, the, whole, the original raw image, that there's a lot of empty space. So there's a lot of colors that just don't even exist in this image. So uh, I realized eventually that a more efficient representation of what colors were in a patch would be if you had uh, the bins based on, you know, overlaid on that particular uh, pixel color, color manifold. So what I did was I just, I took, uh, I did k-means and I allowed it to go and find 100 different uh, centers, you know, the centers of the of each of these Voronoi regions that you get in k-means. And then each of these Voronoi regions, like a little uh, volume uh, at, at each of those points became um, that became a bin. And so now you have a way which you're, you're almost guaranteed to have at least some colors in the bins that you're using for your feature vector. So the, ultimately the feature vector just became this 100 dimensional um, vector which in each component contains the, the normalized uh, frequency of like how many pixels in that patch were in that particular um, three you know, color bin, which is again is the Voronoi region. But for the next step, I just wanted to see what would happen if we clustered these feature vectors. And I was really, really amazed at what came out when you just, just these simple feature vectors based on the color distribution, what uh, would it look like when you aggregated all of the, the patches together? And it really produced a, a fascinating, uh, you can really see the similarity among those, those uh, groups that it produced. And um, I did a bunch of experiments, which I'm not going to go into, about just, just changing the parameters of my algorithm to try to, or changing the number of clusters to try to improve the, the, uh, classific the, the clusters that I got. Overall, they all, in general, they all looked pretty much the same, which was really, really good. <laughs> so, and I did the same thing actually uh, using slightly different feature vectors, but still it works the same if you, if you use color only, these color distribution vectors alone. Um, but I did the same thing on these satellite uh, images of the city in Phoenix. And it was perhaps even more impressive here, the similarities that you get the uh, uh, intra-cluster. So the final stage after we had mapped the cluster IDs back onto the space of the image was to, you might find that when you do that you end up with some kind of noisy uh, boundaries between the, the different regions, at least in this uh, eco-regionalization problem. And what I did to kind of improve that was just applied this algorithm which does uh, denoising or like smoothing. And uh, I'll post this along with the other code, but basically all it does is um, it looks at each pixel individually and it looks at it, it looks at them in a, in a randomized order. Um, and now this is, this is looking at the image um, where each pixel represents an entire patch and like that pixel is like just 
one to the number of clusters that you asked to find in the previous step. So I think uh, I looked at like I looked at all different numbers of different clusters, but if you had k equals 25 clusters that you were or eco regions that you were trying to find, um, you look at a pixel and we're trying to find out whether it is a um, a noise pixel or not. Um, so what I basically do is I ask whether it uh, is surrounded by pixels of a different color. And so the rule I used in a lot of them was if this parameter gamma equals six out of eight, meaning like six out of the eight surrounding pixels are of a different cluster ID or a different label than the focal, the center focal pixel, then I will consider that center, that focal pixel a noise pixel and then change it to um, a different color. Um, and you will change it to the either you can you can use them a simple majority rule where you change it to the the color most prominent in the eight surrounding pixels or you could just actually what I did was I sampled the center pixel to be one of the labels in the uh, surrounding eight pixels but I did it based on how frequently that those labels came up in the eight surrounding pixels so if there was more reds and like if the center was blue and there was uh, the reds and there was greens in equal proportion in the surrounding eight pixels, then I would give a 50% probability of changing it to red and a 50% probability of changing it to green. So that about wraps it up. I had done this project actually a couple years ago, but it was one of the favorite things that I've done just because it produced such a beautiful result and it's really widely applicable for looking at the textures and images. And it just really demonstrates uh, the power of a well-crafted uh, feature vector uh, representation. And it used a lot of uh, methods that I had learned um, at the time in uh, unsupervised learning, pulled in a lot of different uh, techniques. So, yeah, I, I hope that uh, that was clear <laughs> if anyone was actually listening to that. And um, yeah, I think that uh, that pretty much wraps up this project for now. Your testicles got ensnared in the fly of your underwear, which acted like a noose, and it caused uh, scrotal hematoma and contusion. Wow. What? Twisted what? balls. Huh? Uh, in layman's terms, yes, but it's not, as, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's, it's a bruising, which will probably last about a week or so. But oh, okay. I would definitely recommend switching to a style of underwear with no fly. No fly zone? Is that That's what you're exactly telling me? No fly zone. That's a, a popular brand. I'm not, I'm not wearing that underwear. Okay? You got to do it, man. You got long balls, Larry. Long balls. You got long ass balls. I've got long balls. Doctor, you seen his balls, right? W would you say my balls were unusually long? They're a bit more distended than the average testicles. You got long ass balls, Larry. Long ball, Larry. <laughs>